but here's the funny thing. When I was sitting here, I'm like, I'm looking, staring at the stools, but I see the energy. It walks right back from here. It walks in and out, in and out. I'm a medium, and I'm able to connect with people that have crossed over. And there was a mother energy that stepped forward, okay? And she stood right here. And then there started to be younger energy, a young male. And who passed from the chest? <clears throat> because I can't take a deep breath. My uncle died in fire, and his friend got out. <gasps> and he couldn't get out because he had a cast on his arm. Yeah, he was 13. When Teresa started talking about my uncle, I was shocked. I was told that it's hard for someone to talk about because I, I said, why aren't you letting me get to that young male energy? And they said, because we don't talk about it. Never, ever, when I would bring it up, we're never allowed to talk about it. It happened, and like, they put it away. And then my grandmother went six months after him because she, she couldn't, couldn't deal she couldn't with the with passing. Him. That's why I felt the mother energy beside you. Growing up, it was always a secret. It was never said, it was a hidden thing. Tragedy, it was hitting, it was too hurtful for the family to, to talk about it. But as I got older, I heard that there's another brother and was, you know, intrigued by it and I wanted to know more about it. He was never forgotten. He says, I know how hard it is that nobody talked about me, but your uncle's so proud that you brought it back because you named your son after me, he said. Right, wow. And you were looking at pictures recently where you said he looks just like my uncle. Yep. He looks just like exactly. him. Exactly. I named my son Vincent after my uncle Vincent. And for many years, I thought I brought sadness. And my uncle said it was happiness, that it was OK to do it. It means the world to me. I don't know what it is with the white feathers, but I would pay attention to them. Funny, my son gets a feather pillow, and he plucks it in all the pillows. I wake up in the morning, I go, was Sylvester here? He, he, he ate so the bird. <laughs> <laughs> feathers are all over. Validating yeah. that his soul is present. So I shouldn't yell at him for all those feathers on Don't the floor? Don't yell at him. That's my uncle. <laughs> she said, that's my uncle letting me know that he's there. How did that make you feel? Mm, good. <laughs> Sad, but happy. My heart wants to believe that we can connect with our loved ones. Sometimes my head's not always in agreement. Greenland, nice, to, nice meet to meet you. Thank Love you for coming. Dress. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm Misty. Nice to meet you, Misty. Nice to meet Come you. Come on in. Welcome to my home. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. I'm excited to get started and hopefully get some answers to my questions. Have you guys ever been to a medium before? No. OK. No. Um, did your dad have a pinky ring? They show me a square ring. Um, it almost kind of looks like a cuff link where it would be square, yeah. like that kind yeah, of. Yeah, did have a ring okay. like that. Only because yeah. I couldn't separate the souls when they started to come forward, whether if it was a father or it was a son. What they did was come through together because that was one of your questions, is that you just Absolutely. wanted to know if your son was at peace and mm -hmm. if he was with your father. Absolutely. So you know that they are together. My son Dylan passed away two years ago. Him and my dad were very, very close. And one of the main questions that I felt that I needed answered, was he with my dad? Because Dylan always wanted to be with family. It's just amazing to know that he's with my father. My brother Dylan and I were very close. We were only 13 months apart in age, so when we were very, very small, we were the best of friends, and we just kind of had our own little language together, so I miss my brother every day. He keeps showing me this gray sweatshirt, and there's almost like an outline of a dog's face. Was there something about, you know that show on Animal Planet, Pit Roll and Parolees? Oh my yes. God. Pitbull and parolees? That's, wow. Ooh, that's a wow. Because that is where his money went. When they ask at the funeral, did we want, you know, they always say, do I you mean, want to I mean, he used to, to watch cancer? that all the time. And he had pit bulls, so. Donations to his funeral went to a pit bull rescue. To validate that he knows. My brother was an animal lover, so it's really nice to have validation that he sees the things that we've done in his honor. 
It was just amazing for her to bring up something so obscure as that. Um, I was made to feel that you're very angry. Spirit has told me how you feel. You feel that your brother was left to die. Exactly. Because he keeps showing me the car. But then I see people around. And it's almost like, how could nobody know what happened? That's crazy. That is exactly true. He was at a party with friends, and he was ready to go. And he got in the car, and he sat down in the car. How do you connect with the number three? Were there three people in the car? Yes. Do you know? Mm -hmm. He said they left me in the car. They You're left right. me in the car. You're absolutely right. He said they didn't know that I died. They thought he just passed out. I've been angry pretty much ever since he passed away. Angry at the people that were there, and there was a hospital three blocks away. Everyone had my number. Um, I just didn't understand how it could go from just being at a cookout to him being dead. Your son said, Mom, this was an accident. You understand that? I do. He says, I drank before. The only difference is, though, I died that night. That's absolutely true. They were all drinking. Dylan passed away from a mixed combination of prescription medication and alcohol. He, you know, was drinking, and he shouldn't have been drinking with the medication. He said, my sister is not living her life. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to get your daughter back today. That's what I heard. Thank you. He said, you carry a survivor's guilt, that if you were there, you would have been able to save him. I should have been there, because he invited me to the cookout, and I had to work, so I didn't go. And then I got that last phone call at 10 o'clock before I went to sleep. And he said, hey, I'm just calling to let you know I'm OK, and I love you. And then he passed away at 12 midnight. So it was definitely um, unexpected. He says, can you please let this session rescue you? The same way that your brother made choices that night, you have a choice. He doesn't want you to feel guilty about embracing life, smiling, and doing things that you enjoy to do. Your brother is with you. And that soul bond that you share with him will never be broken.